Thank you very much. Um, no, thank you, Eugene, for putting this together. Thank you, everyone that, that's been here, voiced their opinion. Um, you know, when, um, you know, again, unfortunately, I'll apologize for Eve for not being able to, to make it, uh, but she had a very important meeting that. So, you know, we've been doing that this for 15 years together. So we know how to like, you know, make the shift. Um, but, you know, when we were reflecting on the conversation and the invitation that uh, Eugene had given us to, to speak with this, there was some confusion. Um, you know, I have to be honest. And, you know, one of the main things is I, I know Asian comes, you know, like on a personal level, like sort of growing up in the States, experiencing the States, um, and then also like the Haiti piece. So, you know, like Asian really, I'm like, all right, cool, let's, <laughs> let's do this. But the concern was talking about export and we can't talk about export if we don't talk about security. Um, and it, it was, it was tough for us. Eve and I were floating, like, you know, really figuring out, okay, hey, like, What's going to be the best message that we can point across if we can't get deep into that issue? And so thank you for folks for bringing it up. But I'm a very optimistic person, too. So as you guys were talking, I was also thinking about some solutions and things that we can do as a collective. Um, you know, one of the things that Asian asked was, you know, why why do we do this? Why did we do it? For me personally, um, I grew up in the States. Um point in my life and chapter was very, you know, Americanized, but, you know, my heart and heart was always Haiti. And I've come to accept that my mission in life and my raison d'etre is, is really branding and opening up Haiti. I feel Haiti, the world is waiting for Haiti. We just got to be ready. We just got to ready, be ready to roll our sleeves up, get the work done and give them a place where they can eat at a, a consume la Kai burger week. You know, give them a place that they can vacation, give them a place that they can travel, um, you know, and, and that's my mission. Uh, both Ifkar and I, we feel like that's our mission to get out there, lay the foundation, tell a story, get people excited about Haiti. But we need this collective. We need this conversation. We need this camaraderie. So everyone to understand, like, look, there's money out there. We, we can make this happen. We, we can come together and really focus. All right. Hey. You do this, you do this, I do this. And then we as a collective, um, you know, can make, make changes in Haiti. Um, as far as the problems and the challenges, it's been about that, right? Like for me, building the business in Haiti, having not grown up in the culture and in the community, you know, the difficulties of being accepted, the difficulties of, you know, like there was no one to help sort of like navigate with the exception of a few, religion being another one. I'm sure there's some other people on the call who just sat us down and say, okay, hey, fed this, fed that, oh, speak to this person. Um, but yes, without that common business goal of a business of commerce or maybe a group like this, when you come in and you have a crazy idea of Abvon Maskriti, <laughs> it's a Whole Foods market, you do need that, that, that checks and balances and that community to say, keep going. Um, you know, and very early on, we found it from, from again, Asian being another one, HRA with uh, Magdalene Furman. It was mostly the diasporic community um, and then few folks within the Haitian national community that really helped, you know, push that dream forward. Um, so, you know, I think one of the biggest things is that everyone's fighting with themselves for a small pot of gold, as opposed to really coming as a collective to understand the larger pot of gold, right? And Export success starts at home. Like I can create this opportunity to say, hey, buy Creole Lessons products. Let's do a sweepstake and come to Haiti. And, and, you know, I want to take them to a restaurant. I want to take them to this particular experience and create that experience for my customers around Haiti. But if we don't start that success at home, right? Like if we don't know that Burger Week is one of the hottest weeks in Haiti and export that idea, export that vision, like, and, you know, we're sort of shooting ourselves in the foot if as a collective, we, we don't necessarily have that. So when we talk about operations challenges, like really the biggest thing has been around the security piece. Um, you know, we it, that that's it. You know, we're ready. We're hitting the ground running. We're we're going to continue keeping Haiti in our heart, continue putting the press out there about the country. But, you know, that's that's the biggest challenge. And I think, again, the biggest challenge um, that was said earlier, oh, I forgot her name, but the mindset shift. You know, I think the mindset shift is the biggest challenge in understanding that we as a collective and we may, um, made a lot of great points. But what I didn't hear from what he said is we. What I heard him say is like, OK, here's what needs to happen. Here's and solid points, absolutely solid points. But I think if we're sitting here and having this conversation, I'm a student of history. And when you look at American history, it, they didn't wait for the government to build the railroads. 
They didn't wait for the government to build skyscrapers. It came from the business community who sat around and said, look, you take the railroad, you give me the rubber, you give me the steel, let's make this happen, right? So I think as a collective, as everyone, everyone in this call right here built something, they know the challenges, they know what it takes, and they know that it takes community to achieve what we need to achieve. We could not do anything that we did right now without the community. So I think as we're sit here, like we have to like soup, be super tight and say, hey, here's the actionable items. And again, Vision, thank you for like creating this. But I think as we have this conversation, whether or not I get invited or not to come back, I want you guys to come back and say, we miss are not fair. And here's the actionable items that we're essentially going to do as a collective. Go into solutions. I don't know what my time minute is, but again, I think the mindset is the biggest thing. The consensus, group consensus thinking, you know, as you guys were talking, and it's like, you know, why isn't there like using the WhatsApp group to say, hey, here's the best route for us to export as a collective? There are a lot of people in this conversation that has a lot more resources, that has a lot more connection than I do, that can essentially say, okay, hey, I have to, for local consumption, transport between, you know, Route National Nef and Route National One, but hey, there's a Grand Book Clash lot. Why not let's speak with each other to say, okay, hey, here's how do we get around that, circumnavigate that situation. Or I just sent a driver down that road, here's what's happening. That's what Waze is, right? Waze tells you if a cops is, is, is on that same road. Um, so that's an opportunity of like getting into group consensus to really figure out, okay, hey, just a basic WhatsApp group to say, how do I best export my product? Um, Haiti is a brand, right? So everyone is really waiting for that opportunity to like, you know, continue to say, okay, hey, here's how we can essentially help with each other. But it's really coming from that understanding of like um, getting comfortable to know where their goods are and where they're staying. Um, kimas, kimas, kimas. Um, I think the diaspora conversation is a big one as, as well. Um, it was mentioned a couple of times, you know, and again, if we're talking about how we learn and, and mindset shift, I think this just creates a wonderful opportunity to, share ideas with the local um, Haitian economy because you guys are on the ground and you know the expertise. But then the diaspora where we can come in and again, it's just really that language, that optimism, because you're right, you are in a crisis mode. And I think one of the best gifts that the diaspora can give right now is just, guys, we can do this. And you see this with Union Suite. You see this with... Um, um, a lot of sort of media personalities, Samuel Damias that's doing Faces of Haiti. So you're seeing that traction and that energy happening. So I think that pizza energy is the best thing that the diaspora can do. And, and But I think, again, we need the local community to be open, to give us that guidance and willing to sort of work together and roll the sleeves up together to make it happen. Um, so that's, that's, and then without government, again, we as businesses can create opportunities and infrastructure amongst ourselves so that we can export so that the local economy can get what they need and, and continue building that out. Um, but with government, um, again, I think opportunities for private public partnerships might be there, um, pushing the policies. And I know that's the next conversation, but you know, we have to brand it and position it in a way that without local roads, without the local infrastructure, without that security piece, the country as a whole goes down. So when, and I'm probably not right now, but when there is a government, you know, policies that continue to protect local production, right? If, if I can, if, if there was a dispute right now about land, the system is in place in Haiti well enough for you to go through the legal routes so that, you know, a, a magiska or whatever can say, no, 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 this person owns that land. It goes to the son's birth right, whatever. There's nothing in the books that protects the local consumption, right? There's nothing in the books that says, okay, hey, you need to plot, plot of lands need to be X, Y, and Z, whatever. Maybe I don't know. Martin can confirm that with me, but you know, at least when the U.S. says, okay, hey, GMO free, this, that, and the third, that's protecting the reputation of the brand. That's protecting the quality control of what's being exported from the States. So I think once we get to that point, after we do our thing, um, there's opportunities to work with government to reinforce what it means to actually export, create good local quality control items within the local market to build that reputation up, right? Because someone said there's that perception that local things are not you know, good. But again, it goes back to the overall quality control and we as business owners instilling that uh, day in and day out. Um, but then again, when we find ourselves aligned with a government that, that can bring those policies forward is ensuring that, that those standards remain in place and we, we fight for it. I know I got two minutes left. 
I'm going to yield my time to the rest of the committee <laughs> and Eugene um, for questions, comments, concerns, and the passion that's, that's here in this group. Thank you.